Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about 7.4 special right triangles. Today's lesson is particularly important and it is fairly difficult. So I need you to find a good, clean workspace and get to work just as you would during class. As always, the exit quiz question is on the screen at present. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a special right triangle or why on why on earth do we have an entire section in the book dedicated to special right triangles? Well, we're going to talk about two triangles, a 45, 45, 90, and a 30, 60, 90. These triangles are special because they occur quite frequently in engineering. They have interesting ratios in terms of their the lengths of their sides, and it's nice because 45, 30, 60, and 90 degrees all divide 360 degrees quite nicely. The first triangle we're going to look at is a 45, 45, 90, and we're going to look at what might be called a unit triangle. Uh, this is the one that was used to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. And I would just like to simply figure out what C is. And you should say, no sweat, no problem, plug it into Pythagorean theorem. Uh, you get that c is the square root of 2. And I say, awesome, good job. Well, here's the deal. Here's the cool part today that we're going to play around with. If I take this triangle and I make it larger or smaller, the ratio of 1 to the square root of 2 is maintained because if I just make the triangles bigger or smaller, they're proportional to each other. So they will retain the same proportional lengths between the legs and the hypotenuse. So whether that one leg is one unit long or a thousand units long, it will retain the proportion of one to square root of two. So if, for instance, that leg was a thousand units long, the hypotenuse would be a thousand times the square root of two units long. Here's the way the book states it. You'll notice that there's a diagram off to the right. I would draw that. You'll notice that there's a highlighted equation. Super important. You need to borrow that. Write it down. And then finally, I also have a table here. This table is a quick reference point. And what it's talking about is if I'm talking about a 45 degree angle, the length of the opposite side will be this length. So if I'm talking about a 45 degree angle, say this one, the side opposite will be at a ratio of 1 to 1 to square root of 2. Or in this case, if it were 1, the other leg would be 1 and the hypotenuse would be the square root of 2. But we can expand on that in the general case. So think of x as like a scale factor. If I made my triangle 3 times as big, well, the leg would be 1 times 3, which would be 3. The other leg would also be 3, and the hypotenuse would be 3 times the square root of 3. So that's the way to read this table. All of the information on this screen is extremely important. Copy it down. Okay. The second triangle that we're going to talk about is another unique one that starts off very cleanly. Instead of a one side length of or a leg length of 1 and 1, we're going to talk about a triangle with a side length of 1 and a hypotenuse of 2. Just so happens that that works out to be a 30 60 90 right triangle. And the question is how long is B? And again, you'd say no problem. I can go ahead and pop that in, and I get b is the square root of 3. So kind of a weird number to think about, but again, we will retain these same proportions as we scale this triangle up or down. If the short leg is 1, the long leg will be the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse will be 2. If the short leg were 5, then the hypotenuse would be 2 times 5, and the long leg would be the square root of 3 times 5. Similarly stated, from the book, you have this same, these same pieces of information again. Again, you have not just one but two equations to write down. One that says the hypotenuse is twice as long as the short leg, and one that says that the ratio of the long side to the short side 
is the square root of 3. And again, I've got that table for you that says if you're thinking about the 30 degree angle, the side opposite it will be 1 or 1 times whatever the scale factor is. And they will share the ratio of 1 to the square root of 3 to 2 if we talk about the long side and the hypotenuse. Take a moment, copy down the drawing and all this information. Here's a nice screenshot if you did an alt print screen or a snipping tool or I think on a Mac it might be Apple P or Command P uh, to get all that information on one page. Okay, let's do our first example here. You'll notice I've got a triangle with one angle labeled and one side labeled. First thing to do, figure out what type of triangle it is. And as this is a day on special right triangles, it's probably going to be a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90. And it shouldn't take too much work to figure out that it, the remaining angle should be 45. And the second leg should come automatically too by the converse of the base angles theorem. Once you know this is 45 and you have equivalent base angles, that means that you also have equivalent side lengths. So we can pop that right in there for eight as well. Now, you could pop that into Pythagorean theorem and go on your way and you could get there quick, but let's use what we've done today. And I'll show you that it's actually quicker and faster. We have two options, okay? We know that the ratio between the leg length and the hypotenuse is this, is this square root of two. So basically I've taken that unit triangle and I've scaled it up with a scale factor of eight. So thinking about just generally, my hypotenuse already, I already know is eight times the square root of two. If we did it a little bit more formally with the equation, plug in stuff you know, leave out stuff you don't know, you have h equals, and then you plug in the leg length, eight times the square root of two, and you're done. Uh, let me show you how to work this table, okay? So we know a lot about this angle, and its opposing side is eight. So we go over to our table here and we pick one of the 45 degree angles. It doesn't matter which, I think I picked the middle one. And we know that its opposing side length is one times whatever the scale factor is. So I know that this eight is equal to this one times whatever the scale factor is. So I can set up a little equation, eight equals one X. So X must be eight. Therefore, the side opposing the 90 degree angle, in other words, the hypotenuse, this side, should be x, which we just found to be 8, times the square root of 2. And again, we're done. No Pythagorean theorem, no solving. We didn't have to go through that whole mess of simplified radical form, because you notice if you would have done Pythagorean theorem, you would have had to simplify a pretty complicated uh, number under the radical. Not hugely, I suppose it would have been 128. Um, moving on to our second example. Here it is. We're going to find the missing links here. Okay, next example. Here we have another triangle. Copy down the diagram. And you should be able to spot right away that this is another 45, 45, 90. You can convince yourself of that through the base angles theorem uh, and triangle sum theorem. So pull up all your information on a 45 degree, 45, 45, 90 right triangle. We'd like to find x. Again, this is one that you could use the Pythagorean theorem on. It gets a little messy. I'm going to show you that this is just slightly easier. So the first way I'm going to do it is using the equation. Plug in everything I know and everything that I don't know. Leave alone. So hypotenuse, 2 times the square root of 2. Leg, don't know, x times the square root of 2. Set it up. You want x all by itself, so divide by the square root of 2. You divide by the square root of 2. Uh, not only does it cancel on this side, but it cancels on this side to get plain old x equals 2. Now, if you wanted to do this with the table, you would say, hey, I've got a 90 degree angle that I know a lot about the opposing side. So I'm going to look over here in my table at the 90 and the square root of 2 section. And I know that 2 times the square root of 2 has to equal that 
x times the square root of 2. So again, set up an equation. And look, it's the exact same equation. And solve. And you get the same answer, of course. Next example. Take a look at this one. Copy this down. This is obviously a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And I want you to notice that this one you couldn't solve by a Pythagorean theorem. So take a moment and write this down. And we'll get started on this using the equations. So let's use the equations this time. And I've got two choices. I've got hypotenuse equals 2 times the shorter leg, or longer leg equals shorter leg times the square root of 3. So let's just try to see the one that we know the most about, hypotenuse. Don't know how long it is. 2 times shorter leg. Shorter leg, don't know how long it is. So that means I've got one equation with two unknowns. Bad way to start. Instead, longer leg. Hey, I know that's 9. Shorter leg, that's x. So I've got one unknown. And square root of 3. So I've got one equation, one unknown. Let's go with that. Let's use the bottom equation. 9 equals x times the square root of 3. And then we have to solve that. I want x all by itself. So divide by the square root of 3. And you might be tempted to box your answer. Here's the deal. Radicals not allowed on the denominator of a fraction. You have to what's called rationalize the denominator. In other words, make sure that the denominator does not contain a square root or any root for that matter. So how do I get rid of that? One thinks, well, I'd like to square it. Well, if you squared this, then you'd have to square the numerator and the other side of the equation for that matter. So let's do something a little clever here. Let's multiply by 1. If I multiply by 1, it doesn't change the value of anything, except I'm going to make that 1 look quite clever, like that. And you'll notice if we multiply these two fractions, up on top I get 9 times the square root of 3, no biggie. On the bottom, I get square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which means that I'm really taking square root of 3 and squaring it, which means on the bottom I should just get 3, and I do. And from there, the 9 and 3 simplify a little bit, and it cleans up my answer just a little bit. So it's 3 times the square root of 3. So never box your answer with a radical underneath. Rationalize your denominator, and you notice all you have to do is make a new fraction that its numerator and its denominator is the same thing as the radical portion of the denominator. It's just a fancy way of multiplying by 1. You've done it before. I'm going to ask you to do it over and over and over again. Then we need to go on to finding y. So now we know the hypotenuse and the shorter, well, we don't know the hypotenuse, but we would like to know, but we do know the shorter leg, and we would like to know the hypotenuse. There we go. So set up another equation. y, our hypotenuse, equals 2 times the length of the shorter leg, which is what we just found. From there, a little bit of simplification, and we've got it going on there. So there's 6 times the square root of 3. I want to point out very quickly that you could have done this using the table as well. The stuff you know about is this 60 degree angle and this nine, length of 9 opposing it. So you look at your 60 degree angle, and you know that that 9 should be the same as this x times the square root of 3. So you set 9 equal to x times the square root of 3. And look, you get the same equation, you have the same issue with rationalizing the denominator, and you get the same answer. At the top, you'll find your homework assignment. I'll see you next time.